YouTube and welcome to another Zen in the Art of Miniature Painting video and today we're looking at the Perry Miniatures French Napoleonic Line Infantry 1812 to 1815 box set. As you can see you get 42 miniatures in the box and the cover art is wonderfully rendered by Peter Dennis in an Osprey style. Uh, the little details are nice, great painting guide from the off. Uh, you can see the details on the musician's jacket and the Voltigeur skirmishing at the front. And if we look to the rear of the box, we can see uh, that, again, it's nicely laid out. Uh, it tells you everything you get inside the box. 40, 42 infantry, two flags, and bases. Um, the top right-hand side has got your painting guide for your line infantry. The way that they're done is in a dolly style, so they're very simple to understand. They're not stylized in any way, and you will be able to paint your figures using nothing but the back of the box, which is always very useful for people who are just starting. On the bottom left, we have an actual-sized figure. And then this musician on the left is indicative of how you assemble the troops. In other words, they're not multi-post figures, but I actually quite like this. Um, again, a great start to a box set. Before you've even opened it, you already know where you're going with this particular set. And here is a leaflet that you receive inside the box. Uh, very nicely presented. Again, the periods have done a fantastic job. The little bit of history in the top left. And then, um, which just introduces you to the box set. Uh, excellent stuff. And then when we look at the top right, you can see the Shaco details for your uh, Voltigeurs, Grenadiers, or Carabiniers if you decide to do light infantry. And little details like this which really bring this box to life is, for instance, how the fatigue caps were stored and what they look like. The, old, uh, the Bonnet de Police, how to paint them, the Pocalem, that sort of thing. Um, when I did a Victrix box set, my first plastic set, I just didn't know what those things were and I didn't know how to paint them, so I just ended up painting them black or guessing and that wasn't great. So for a beginner, this is an excellent box. You get the cuff details. Um, I wouldn't fuss with those, but it's if you need them. And then which knapsacks to use with which figures. Uh, looking at the um, painting guide for the light infantry, you can use the same box set for the light infantry. Uh, it's, it's really great. Again, it's that same sort of uh, painting guide presentation for colors uh, of how to paint your fellows and that's really really nice I think more more manufacturers should start following this this is an example of how to do things correctly and then on the reverse we're treated to yet more goodness this bit is the battalion in attack column which is really useful again for the beginner we're starting off uh, we don't necessarily know how to play we're not sure how to organize our troops and the periods have gone ahead and given us um, a great little a guide there the pompon colors are listed for each company. Uh, they show you how the skirmish and Volta gears go together. Personally, I prefer to use um, bases of four figures to a company um, and then to bulk them out with a few metals like a mounted kernel, but that's my personal preference. I just end up with some spares and I end up using the skirmishes for sharp practice. But really great stuff. The Perrys are doing a, everyone a great favor here by really being inclusive. Normally, Napoleonics can be quite intimidating for the beginner. Um, and this this is a great uh, little in, you know entry into the world of Napoleonics, which is otherwise quite exclusive. On the top right, they have the standards, which are the 1815 standards. That's the sort of traditional French tricolor. Um, I prefer the 1809 campaign, so I'll probably end up using GMB flags. But it's nice that the Perrys uh, include these. Um, you will need to replace them eventually after you've done two units, of course. And then they've got a little few recommended rules here. As you can see, Black Powder, of course, by Rick Priestley, their great friend. Uh, General the Brigade, which is a very popular group, which I've played. Um, so excellent stuff. Uh, really, this is a great introductory box set to anyone. And then finally, Swiss Infantry and French Service. If you are tired of painting blue and you want to do some red coats for your French army, here you are. You've got the French, um, the, the, Sw the Swiss regiments, one through four, and all the details are there. Um, it's really, really, really easy to use. It's fantastic stuff. Um, especially the variations. So if you fancy putting some, some ragged looking sw Swiss in your army, uh, this is how you do it. Um, excellent stuff again. The, the uniform guides are bundled with a box. It just makes all the homework you have to do so much less and get, allows players to get things onto the table, which is always positive. So here we have the command sprue. You get one of these in the box and on the top left you have the command figures. We have the musician, an officer and a standard bearer. And uh, then to the right, we have two great coat wearing figures. One's got epaulets, so he's a grenadier or a voltigeur, depending on how you paint him. And uh, then in the middle, we've got all the bits and pieces. So there's a, a voltigeur type skirmishing chap there, some arms for him, 
and then there's a selection of extra heads that you can mount. Um, the poses uh, are quite static, as you can see. They tend to be marching troops, but uh, I have no issue with this. And the, the, in terms of multi-pose, I don't really care because um, the more work I have to do assembling, the less time I have to paint them. So, yeah, uh, the drums there, knapsacks there, you end up with two spare drums um, and a couple of spare skirmishing figures if you're not using those. So you can do sharp practice and you can use the drums for litter for your bases. Here's another grey coat armed uh, wearing figure with uh, epaulets again. Um, I don't know why they've done the bases separate for him and the uh, other Voltaic we're going to see in a minute. They've done them as little separate bits you have to stick on. Uh, bit of an odd choice, but okay. These are great heads. Uh, retreat from Hosco types. You've got the chap on the left who's clearly had his shako cut. You just see there's a big slice there. Uh, the fellow in the middle has got sort of flappy bits dangling down. Uh, and then on the left, this chap's quite clearly quite cold. Um, he's all wrapped up. So um, wonderful, wonderful character pieces for your Moscow type things. Here's the other, f uh, the other Volta gear. He's leaning into the shot. Um, again, just to just sort of say it again, I'm using these for skirmishes in, uh, in in sharp practice. Eventually, that's where I'll be using them. I've assembled him, and he does come out quite nice. The detail on his face is a bit more shallow than, say, Victrix. But the, the facial animation is a little bit more subdued with the Perry's as well. So you, you do trade off. You don't get ridiculously exciting looking faces. But uh, at the same time, they don't necessarily hold ink or varnish as well if you're using the dip method, which is what I use. So, But, um, you know, uh, excellent stuff. Um, the standard Perry fair in respect of the quality. You can't really complain. Um, it just If you just look at him now, he's not even painted and he looks good. So that's that's excellent. Right, and then we have six figures here, um, a mixture of epauletted troops and non-epauletted standard line. Uh, they're all marching, as you can see. Um, I don't tend to like figures that are firing and things like that because you have weapons that poke forward and they just get end up getting broken, which I found with my Victrix box sets a lot of the time. Um, and then knapsacks above them, which correspond to them. These ones have got the roll, the great coat, the rolled up great coats. They obviously go with the chaps who aren't wearing great coats. So six of those in a nice neat little line, um, exceptional stuff. They ha they are actually quite varied in terms of pose um, for simply marching figures. Um, I'm I'm very happy with this. They they'll take almost no time to paint up. Uh, exceptional quality and exceptional stuff. And if you look towards um, uh, just a quick note on things like the casting quality, I'm dead chuffed. Um, there's not much cleanup work to be done. I didn't really have to spend too much time scraping them with a knife to get flash or anything off. Uh, you know, you just you just cut them off and get going. Um, right, and then what I want to show you next is the uh, the other sprue. This is just the you get two of these. This is the standard sprue, so it's largely a repeat of the command sprue. So the six troops at the top are simply a repeat again. Um, uh, I'm. There's, there's not much to really say about them. There's just, you know, they're, they're exactly the same. The Perry box will be quite repetitive in that respect. Um, I just wanted to show you the back of the, ruck, the rucksacks and knapsacks to show you the differences there. What's nice is that they've, they've put little bits and pieces on to set them apart. So we've got uh, the one on the, the second from the left is um, he's got some sort of saucepan type thing, and the other one's got a pan of some sort strapped to his knapsack. And... Uh, yeah, excellent stuff. And look at the depth of detail from the rear. I mean, these these troops really do look great. Um, you can see the turn ups, uh, the turn backs on their on their coats, um, even at this distance, and that's exceptional. Um, then just a a quick a quick scout around the rest of the sprue. Uh, there's this wonderful knapsack here. This is my personal favorite. It's got a pair of spare boots or shoes attached to it. Uh, that really is just life in the field personified. Okay, so this is the where it changes. You have uh, the top top left. You've got the um, three three troops in great coats that replace the the command figures. And uh, yeah, basically you can if you if you buy two of these boxes, you can do one one battalion great coated and the other one not, um, which you know is, is is good for for people who want to do something maybe more theatre specific, uh, the Moscow campaign perhaps. Um, the retreat from Moscow, that kind of thing, is particularly suited to the head swaps and the great coats. For twenty pounds, exceptional value for money. Uh, the costs are clean. 
Um, there's very little wo extra work to be done. They're not multi-pose, so you're not going to spend your life attaching tiny spindly little arms. And the only mold lines I could find were perhaps down the legs, like on this figure here. Um, and even then, it just takes a quick scrape with a knife, and you're all good. Um, it's not hard work to put these together, which is a merciful change after struggling through a Victrix box set. And um, the plastic is robust. The poly it's good solid styrene. They don't snap when you cut them off the sprue. Even the bayonet tips are, are pretty pretty solid and will stick, you know, stay together. Um, I'm very happy with the sprue, and uh, I've enjoyed painting some of them. So for your delectation, I have painted up a uh, figure. This is a uh, great coat wearing um, line line infantryman, a fusilier, and he's got uh, the wrong backpack on. That's my mistake. I can always snap that off and put a new one on him. But basically, what I wanted to highlight was how quickly and easily these can paint up. So he's not been matte varnished. All I did with this guy was uh, white undercoat, block colors, uh, and it took about five minutes, followed by a quick dip. Stood him for 24 hours, and he's ready to go. So he's not sticky anymore. All he needs now is a little bit of varnish, and he's done. And then he can rank up nicely with his fellow uh, soldiers. And um, with this style of painting and these figures in particular, you can crank out battalions in almost no time. I'm trying to get a bit of focus here on the face just to show you. The detail's good, I just don't think that the faces are deep cut enough like the Victrix ones uh, to hold um, the dip that I'm using. But I mean, that's not really a, a slight on the box set. So here are some painted and based figures. The bases aren't complete yet, but uh, they give you a sense of where I'm going with this. So I've got a company on the left of Perry figures, and then on the right uh, some uh, Leger that I did in great coats using the old guard grenadier box from Victrix, and uh, yeah, size wise, they the the Victrix are slightly taller than the Perry figures. Um, that said, they're actually not as robust as the Perry figures. I find the Perry figures um, are less brittle. The plastic is just of a better quality. I find um, the weapons are less spindly and they don't keep breaking. Um, in terms of detail, they're more or less on a par. The, the peris tend to be more sharply sculpted, except for the faces, which are a little bit more shallow in detail, but actually look better. It's just a painting method I'm using that's uh, not really doing them justice. Um, and then, uh, I, in terms of compatibility, I do think that they are compatible. Uh, here's a little more of a flat view. Um, the, the, I've used a few heads from the peri box that I showed you on the sprue. And I've managed to successfully mount those on Victrix bodies, and they don't look out of place. So, uh, excellent stuff from the Perrys. I think for £20 a box of 42 figures, you just can't go wrong. Um, the, uh, the details are crisp, um, and they're, they're rare, super affordable. And now is the time to get into Napoleonics if you've never considered it in the past, because gone are the days of having to buy tons of metal. Obviously, I'm comparing these heavily to Victrix um, because I've actually used Victrix figures. You can see the bayonets have snapped off there. Uh, I've, I've, I'm holding off final judgment until I've used more Victrix figures, but uh, I prefer the non-multi-pose of the Perry figures. I'm looking forward to trying out Warlord's offerings to see what they do. I, I get the impression from the pictures online that they're also pretty uh, uni-posed, but that's not a bad thing. So Perry Miniatures, French Napoleonic Line Infantry, highly recommended. Um, I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you like it, and please leave comments below. They're always appreciated. Um, have a great day.